Hey friends, how are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing so, so well, and I'm super excited to be back today with another video. I actually just filmed this video one time before this, but I had no sound, so here we go again. I am back. Well, my lights just turned off. So I am back, we are filming this video again, and today we are covering everything that sold for me in the month of November, 2021. So this is my first Q4 as being a full-time reseller. I've not done a November or December before that I was going full-time. I only went full-time reselling right around like August of this last year. So this is all new territory for me. I'm trying to still figure it out. And Jeremy and I also have recently just moved. I'm still putting my house together and I've been traveling. So it's been a kind of crazy few months, but our numbers for November are definitely better than they were for October. So we're thankful for that because my October numbers did not go so well, but now we're kind of back on track to where we were before a bad month. So I'm happy that our numbers are doing better and we sold more this month than we did last month. So we're looking at it in a positive light. Even if it's not where I want to be right now, I'm still doing well. And if you guys are not exactly where you wanna be right now with your sales, then that is okay too. I think we all need to hear it sometimes. Don't compare your numbers to other people's. I need to hear it. I'm constantly guilty of that. So let's look at what sold for us in November of 2021. I'm gonna cover what my total sales were, how much my gross profits were. So after Poshmark took its fees, and then I'm gonna tell you guys what my cost of goods was or how much I spent for everything that I sold. And then we're gonna cover how much I actually made at the end of the day, my net profit after all all of my fees and the cost of goods. So it's gonna be a fun video. I enjoy making these. If you guys like this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. But let's talk about those numbers. So in total, the total sales that we made from my Poshmark, Jeremy's Poshmark, our Mercari accounts, all of that jazz was $2,882. So we sold right under $3,000. If you account for the different trips that I took to different Plato's closets and sold clothes and things like that, then we definitely were over $3,000. So I'm going to go right around that $3,000 number with that $2,882 in total sales from selling online. Now, after Poshmark took all of its fees and cuts and things like that, we made $2,273.35 of gross profit. To make that almost $3,000 number, we sold 83 items, 54 items on my Poshmark and 29 items on Jeremy's Poshmark and Mercari, which is kind of low for us, honestly. We've been selling over 100 items each month lately for the past like six months. And so for us to still have a pretty good sales number with selling 20 less items than normal means that we've been selling a lot more high end or a lot more expensive items this month than we have in the past, which is great. That's really good. Now we just need to get that volume back up and we should be in a good place. So we spent $163 for 83 items. So that's right about $2 per item, which is not bad. Honestly, I'm happy with that. I would say the majority of things that I buy, probably about 85% of the things that I sell online, I get in the bins and then I pay up for some pieces. And you're gonna see some of those pieces in today's little breakdown, pieces that I bought at an uptown cheapskate or buy sell trade store or pieces at my local Goodwill where I pay a little bit more for them than I do when I go and I go to the bins where you pay per pound for items and when you pay per pound for items, you're spending only about a dollar per item. So you're gonna see that here in a second because we're gonna go over all of my interesting sales for the month of November and I had quite a few. I think we sold 22 items for $50 and above, which is really good for us. So I'm gonna share those pieces with you guys in the hopes that it'll help you guys also, if you are a reseller, know what things sell well or what things can sell for a good amount of money. A $50 mark is really pretty good for reselling. And even if you're not a reseller, it is helpful to see what things actually sell if you guys like watching my thrift hauls, you know? Like some things do sell and they sell really quickly and some things sit around for a while. So let's show you guys what happens when we go to the selling portion of my thrifting. But I'm gonna pull up my computer real quick because I have all the spreadsheets up on this. These videos tend to perform not super well for me compared to my thrift hauls. So if you do like it, please show it some love, give it a like and hit that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, only about 50% of you guys watching are subscribed. So it would literally mean the world to me if you would hit that subscribe button because that is the number way in the way to help my channel grow. So let's talk about those interesting sales. The sales that sold for more than $50 are a good brand, a good piece to be on the lookout for, starting with this Peruvian connection dress. So this dress was super cute. It has these like puff sleeves. It was a longer kind of like, um, probably like knee length, a little bit lower length dress. And I got this at my local Goodwill for $7.99. So I paid $8 for it. I sold it for $60 and I made 48. 
So $48 in gross profit after my $8 cost of goods, we made $40 in net profit on that dress. And that is, I think, the first Peruvian connection piece I've ever picked up. So I would be on the lookout for that as well. It didn't really get, it didn't really garner a lot of attention. It didn't get a lot of likes, but it did sell for a good amount eventually. So I'm still happy with that and we'll take that sale for sure. And then the next two pieces I got at the bins, I think on the same trip, honestly, and they both were vintage pieces. So this first one is this vintage Kellen country collection, I think, little Irish hand knit wool sweater. And this one got so much attention. It went really fast. I think I listed it and it was gone within the week. And it was just like this fisherman's Irish kind of hand knit thing. And this is a brand slash like category that I even talked about in my things I'm looking for for the winter in the bins video. I find a lot of Irish and Icelandic knit sweaters do really well, fisherman sweaters. And this is one of those. So this sold for $55 and I made $42.50 um, gross profit from Poshmark after they took their cuts and I think I did a shipping discount on this as well. And then from that $42.50, I paid a dollar for it in the bin. So I made $41.50 for it, which is amazing. So I would definitely be on the lookout for those or Craig Dawn, things like that do really well. The same trip, I also picked up this really cute vintage yellow angora like rabbit hair really soft cardigan sweater it had shoulder pads it was amazing i showed it to you guys in a recent video and this also sold for 55 dollars so again 42 dollars and 50 cents is the gross profit the net profit after my cost of goods 41 dollars 50 cents because i got that in the bins as well so I do not count out vintage pieces, even if they are no name pieces like this and yellow Angora sweater was, I still pick them up and they do really well. Vintage is very popular. So I love that. And definitely the fabric content had a lot to do with why it went quickly. Then the next piece is the first ever Frank and Oak piece that I've ever picked up. And it is this gray jacket. So it was a men's piece. I think it was a wool as well. And it was really nice. I picked it up for, I think like $4.99, something crazy at my local Goodwill and it sold for $50. So I made $40 from Poshmark and with the cost of goods, I made about $35 in net profit. So again, I'm happy with that. I'm trying to aim right around like 25, 30 bucks would be great to make from each piece that I pick up to resell. And since I spend not very much money for any of my pieces, it's usually very worth it for me. Now, this next piece is so exciting. This is the first ever Revolve piece that I found. I found this, I listed it, and it sold within a few days, and it was this really beautiful green, kind of like really chunky little bobble sweater. It had little pom-poms all over it. It was really cute, and it was in a size small, and it was from the Revolve brand Lovers and Friends, and that sold within a few days for $75 outright, which is so good. I got an offer, a lowball offer for like $40 or something like that, and I did not take it, and I'm glad I didn't because I sold it outright. And from that, I made $60 from Poshmark and I got it in the bins for a dollar. So I made $59 on that sweater and I'm very happy about it. So that was such a cute piece and I am hoping that they are loving it now in their closet. And then the next sale I have that sold for over $50 is actually a bundle of two things that sold for $50. So I had two pairs of different Ugg boots, same size. One was a Zia, so like it was kind of a chunkier platform boot. So the other one was a Cardi boot, so more like a chunky knit, kind of longer top piece of boot. And each one of those I had listed, I think at $75, but they bundled them together and I gave them a great price of 100 for both. So each of those pairs of boots sold for $50. The first one I got from the bins, the Cardi boots I found in the bins for a dollar. And then the other pair, the Zia ones, I found those at a local random Goodwill in Pennsylvania on a Sunday for like a dollar. They were on this crazy like dollar color sale or something. And so I spent $2, I made $80 in gross profit. So net profit is $78 from those two pieces. So that was a great, great find. I always pick up Ugg boots if I can find them because they do so well for me and I like selling them. That's the important thing too. You gotta enjoy the things that you're selling. So I enjoy selling Ugg boots and I find them quite often. So I will take it. And not all my sales are like this guys. A lot of my sales are like $7, $10 for things I've had sitting for like, you know, two years. Some of these pieces though, we're good sellers because I've picked them up more recently when I've understood better what sells. Like this Nubatag's Burberry Golf Argyle like sweater. It's like a short sleeve sweater. And it was so cute, 
so well made and it was new with tags i got it at my local uptown cheapskate i think i paid something like 15 18 dollars for it it was on sale there i think i had it's i think i had some in-store credit as well so i think i paid around 15 dollars for it but i sold it on poshmark for 95 dollars so that was a good sale and I made $76 in gross profit from that. So after my cost of goods, probably right around 60, a great sale. One of my best ones. I think that is my best sale probably of the whole month. And I'm very happy with it. It was not up very long from the same trip to the Uptown Cheapskate. I also got this and other stories kind of color blocked sweater. It also photographed really well. And so it was super easy to Get that one sold i think that one sold the same day it might have even been to a viewer but that one sold for fifty dollars and so forty dollars of gross profit i think i spent about eight dollars for this one so about 32 dollars of net profit not too shabby and then the next thing that i sold is this patagonia women's los gatos quarter zip fleece pol fleece pullover i think i got this in the bins if i remember correctly i found this in the bins it was this amazing i did find this in the bins and it was this amazing really like soft and almost like fluffy not fleecy pullover and it was so cute i don't know how these things end up in the bins i bought it for a dollar and we sold it for sixty dollars so i made forty six dollars and fifty cents from poshmark and since I got in the bins, I made about $45 of net profit on that piece, which is absolutely insane. I'm very happy about it. And I love finding Patagonia. Patagonia is something that I love selling. It's just easy for me to list and I am growing to really appreciate it. So those things I'm always looking for in the bins and they sell well. And then the next piece is this pair of Betsy Johnson little floral heels. They're sparkly. They have these flowers attached to them. They're super cute and strappy in great condition. I found them at a Goodwill in Indiana. I actually left them at home with my parents and I had my mom send them out for me and they sold for $50. So I paid $7.99 to buy them. So I made $40 from Poshmark. So $32 after all was said and done was my net profit, which is pretty stinking good in my opinion. So that was a pretty good sale. And thank you mom so much for sending it out. She sends out some of my things if I have to leave them at home, if I can't fly back with them. And that definitely happened this last time I went home. <laughs> so this next piece is this set, actually. I found these in the bins. It was a Young, Fabulous, and Broke tie-dye set. They're both in a size small, and I found the shirt. And then I found the sweatpants. It was a great day for me. And I sold them recently for $55. So after all the fees, Poshmark gave me $44, and I spent about two bucks to buy it. So $42 of net profit which is amazing. So very happy with that sale. And then another find from the bins. I found these in a random bin somewhere in the country between Maryland and Indiana. I was driving across the country. I stopped at a random bins. I think it might've been in Gary. I don't remember. I spent a dollar for them. They're this pair of Halflinger wool boots. I've sold Halflinger clogs before. I think I sold those for 50 bucks. I just sold these boots for $50 as well. And then we made $40 from those. So I spent about a buck, maybe two to get those. So about $38 of profit when all is said and done is not too bad. And then a brand that I often pass on is Columbia but I did sell a piece this month for over $50. And it just really is dependent on style, I think, for this brand. Columbia, I pass on their fleeces, but I picked up this Omni Heat puffer jacket, and this one actually sold for a good amount. I sold it for $50, made 40, so about $39 of profit, because I found it in the bins. So I would definitely pick up puffer jackets from Columbia, puffer coats, things like that. I do pass on the fleeces. Sometimes they can make you money, but I don't know enough about the fleeces in general to really do a good job of selling those. But it's something that I bring up because I would not sleep on all Columbia. Some people pick up everything Columbia. I happen to only pick up certain items and I think that that has been working well for me. So I would definitely do some research before you pick up Columbia. But if you're in the bins, honestly, that was a great pickup in the bin, so I would pick it up in the bins maybe. Now, if you guys are following along with my $1 thrift challenge, then you will know about this sale already. I picked up two Anthropology plus size pieces in the bins in Salem, Oregon. And I feel like this video is like just tracking my movements across the country, you know? <laughs> like I'm picking up things in Pennsylvania and Delaware and Maryland and Indiana and Oregon. like. Who am I? I picked up two plus size anthropology pieces in the bins in Salem. 
and I sold both of those in a bundle for a hundred dollars I had one listed at 50 one at 65 they offered me a hundred I took it so each one sold for 50 bucks and I made $80 from that sale and I spent $2 to buy both of them. So I made $78 on that sale and that money went straight back into my challenge bank. And it's been a lovely series, probably my favorite video series or favorite videos I've ever made. So if you guys like this video, if you guys like me and you haven't seen those videos, I would definitely go and check them out. Then this next one is this vintage Philadelphia Eagles windbreaker jacket. I also grabbed this in the bins and this is something that I saw somebody like debating on. Holding it up, they were looking at it and then they put it back. I walked over and grabbed it real quick because I sell a lot of vintage sports jackets and coats and crewnecks all the time for a good amount of money. And so I sold this one for $58 and we made $46.40 for something I paid about a buck for. So $45 of profit on that one, right into my bank account. Not too mad about that. If you guys go thrifting in the bins, definitely stick around until people are sorting their cart because you find the best things when people put things back. A lot of times people don't know the value of things. That's how I found so many amazing pieces in the bins. That's how I found some $100 sweatshirts before. Like you gotta wait until people put things back. So now we're into Jeremy's sales. He sold, I think three things on Mercari this month. We haven't been really doing a lot with Mercari. Jeremy and I both have a Poshmark and that's where we do the majority of our selling. I just really like Poshmark. I enjoy selling on it. And Jeremy and I do everything ourselves. So we share manually. I list everything myself directly onto Poshmark. I, rent. I don't have any service that cross lists for me. So this is all just like, you know, like pounding the payment, hard labor. We might need to automate our things to keep up with competition, but man, some of it makes me feel a little sketchy, you know? <laughs> but this piece is one of Jeremy's biggest sales and it is this Kate Spade Saturday wool jacket. Now, this is one of those things you kick yourself for because I had this for probably eight months before I listed it. It was in a death pile. I had taken pictures of it and I just never listed it. Then I finally listed it when we moved and it sold within the first week for $65. It's just like, what, what, what was I doing, you know? <laughs> but, um, you know, we all do, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. We made $52 in gross profit from that jacket. I got it in the bins for a dollar. And so we made $50 of a net profit from that. And you know, it just sat around for a long time. It happens. Next piece is also from the bins and it is from the brand Theory. It's this Theory leather pair of pants that we got in the bins. They're a size two, so they're pretty small. But this is the second Theory piece I had found in the bins, a leather piece that I had sold pretty recently. I sold a leather jacket the month before, I think, for $125 that I found in the bins. And this one we sold for $75 from the bins. So we made $58.20 in gross profit. Once we took out our cost of goods, which was about a dollar, we made about $57 from that pair of pants. So that's pretty crazy, pretty lovely, but pretty crazy too. And then another piece that I sold, I picked it up in Indiana with my mom at a Salvation Army. It's this Victoria's Secret vintage gold label robe and it was beautiful. It was like blue paisley, very like old timey and really cool. I think I spent about five bucks for this and it sold for $55 this month. I had my mom send it out for me again. So thank you, mom. Thank you, Nada. You're the best. And it made us $44 from Poshmark. So probably about right around $39 of net profit at the end of the day. I should probably take my mom out for like lunch or something to thank her for sending those out for me. I'm very thankful for her for helping me out. Then we have two more sales for over $50. I know this is a lot of information. If you guys like seeing all these things, then please let me know. If it's too much for you, also let me know. That's helpful for me when I'm filming these videos for you. Two more pieces. The first one is another Dollar Thrift Store, Dollar Thrift Challenge item. And that is this pair of Donald J. Pliner Fifi sandals. I found these at a local Goodwill. I spent $4 to buy them and we sold them, Jeremy sold them for $70. So we made $56 from Poshmark. $52 of net profit. So we just picked up a $50 bill just from reselling those shoes. I think they sold the first like day or two that we listed them. So that was a great find. If you find that exact pair, the Fifi from Donald J. Pliner, they seem to do really well on Poshmark. So I would highly suggest it. Then the last thing that we sold for over $50 in November was this Kenneth Cole Reaction purple puffer coat. 
and this was a great size it was an extra large but this again this is something I have listed but did take like eight months to sell so a lot of Kenneth Cole a lot of Kenneth Cole reaction does get passed on at the thrift store in the bins a lot of times I'm guilty of passing on it as well but sometimes it does sell and sometimes it sells for a good amount we sold it for $50 $38.50 of profit from Poshmark and then $37 about of net profit because we got it in the bins for a dollar so that was still a good sale. It took a long time to sell. It was a bulkier item, a little bit bigger to store, but probably still worth it, even though we had to, you know, move it with us from an apartment to our new home. We still sold it eventually. So that's good. Some brands, they just sit, and some brands, they sell eventually. It just takes time. So those were all the pieces that we sold in November for over $50. Those were our November numbers. But I do have a question for you guys, and that is, now that I'm monetized on YouTube, this is part of my business, this YouTube channel, and I do make money from this. So would you guys like to see a breakdown of the money I also make from YouTube in with my November sales in my monthly sales report? If you would, let me know down below. If that's like TMI for you guys, you don't really care, then also let me know. I don't care. I'm an open book. I share everything with you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, knowing how much I make from AdSense and things like that, I can also put that in this video. So let me know. But that was our month in review. That was all November 2021 had with us. I'm hoping in December we do even better than November. That would be wonderful. Gotta pay for all those Christmas presents. Let's hope we do well this coming month. If you guys want to support me, if you guys like my channel, then make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Those are the number one ways to support me and they're free for you guys to do. If you guys want to support me in other ways, you can go shop my Poshmark closet. It's always listed in the description down below. But the free ways, subscribe and just follow along with my journey. I am so thankful to have you guys here. I hope you guys are having an amazing December. We're getting closer and closer to Christmas and I'm so excited. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and until the next video, bye.